Hi guys, I'm Adam from Midwest Panel Builders and today I'm going to tell you about the different Bluetooth connections that you'll have in a G3X touch system and how to use them. So generally speaking, you're going to have two or three Bluetooth connections depending on the uh, equipment list of your aircraft. The first one's going to be the G3X touch display. That's going to be just for flight plan transfer as well as AHARS data to come back to your device. Uh, the second one's going to be through your transponder if it's an ADS-B in and out transponder. So the GTX 45R or the GNX 375 or one of the GTX 345 series. The final one's going to be your audio panel if you have one equipped. We use the GMA 245 or 245R series. Also the GMA 350 and 35 series has Bluetooth as well. Before we get started doing these Bluetooth connections and showing you how to do all of them, one I want to make sure that I make note of is the transponder. So if you have a remote mount transponder like the GTX 45R or GTX GTX 345R and you do not have a GTN navigator connected to it, the Bluetooth connection, you just pull it up on your uh, device and you'll be able to connect to it immediately. If you do have a navigator like the GTN, what you actually have to do is go through it and we'll show you how to do that. With the GNX 375, of course, being the ADS B in and out source, um, you have to go through that anyways, so it doesn't matter for that one. Okay, so let's start with the Bluetooth connection for the G3X touch display. So if we start from our main EFA screen, if we hit menu, menu, setup, Bluetooth, you can see now we are automatically searching. One thing you can do as a quick tip, if you hit the menu button, you can rename the GDU. So what we do is we just name it the tail number of the aircraft. Uh, and if you'd like, you can put something even more descriptive like G3X. And you can save that. Uh, so you can see on the iPad here that G3X was found. So I hit pair. After the code matches, hit OK on the screen, and now the iPad shows that as connected. Uh, while we're here, we'll just go ahead and also do the uh, transponder connection. So if I go over to System, and then I go over to Connect Setup, now we have the tail number ADSB. That also comes up on the iPad here as soon as I open that page. So I'll go ahead and start the pair request from the iPad, and then hit pair, and then hit yes. And for some reason, uh, with the ADS-B, you get that message on the iPad that says parent successful, but you can see it's clearly connected. So I'm not sure why that happens, but it does. Now, one thing you might want to do on both the GTN slash GTX 45 and the G3X is turn on something called automatic reconnect. So on the G3X, if we hit menu and we hit manage paired devices, we can turn on this automatic reconnect here. And what will happen is if the G3X shuts down or if the iPad becomes disconnected for any reason, automatically the G3X will attempt to do a connection to the iPad. Um, so it makes it a lot more convenient when you're flying along uh, if something does disconnect or you just, you know, when you're first powering up the aircraft, you don't have to worry about that. So we'll do the same thing on the GTN. And actually on the GTN it did it automatically, so we're good to go. The final connection on this aircraft is the GMA245R audio panel. So to make that connection, we'll hit audio. We will go to phone and media, and we will hit pair device, and that'll start the pairing process. Unfortunately, we can't rename the GMA245R, so it comes up as GMA245R, and I think that's the serial number, actually. So we'll start that pair request, and then that paired automatically. And now you can see on the G3X, it picked up my iPad Pro and uh, telephone and media. So what can we do with this? Well. Let's open up Garmin Pilot, and you can see now we've got this Connects icon here on the uh, flight plan area that's coming up. So the first thing I can do is I can actually send my flight plan to the, uh, to the G3X. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to our flight plan page. We can see currently the flight plan source is external GPS. So we'll open up flight plan on the GTN, and uh, so I'll hit send. And you can see on the G3X is flight plan received. So mine is the D95, which is the Lapeer Airport. Going to Flint, going to Howell, going to Jackson. So if I hit activate, it comes up, it, <clears throat> excuse me, it comes up on the GTN, and it also comes up on the G3X. Um, if I make any changes either on the GTN or G3X, let's say I add one more waypoint and I go to Lansing. Now on the iPad, automatically it asks me if I'd like to receive the updated flight plan. So I'll say yes and now it adds Lansing as a waypoint. Uh, you can see we've actually got traffic on the iPad here. This is coming from the GTX 45R. We've got a United aircraft 35,000 feet above us right there. And uh, so we can see that information. So that's pretty cool actually. Um, it's kind of a gloomy day, so I'm surprised to see anybody at all, but there they are. Um, 
We can do weather on here with ADS-B, just like you could with a Stratus or something. Um, one thing that's actually pretty neat, so with the G3X or the GI275 or the G500 and G1000s, so anything that has EIS, Garmin Pilot has this EIS page here now that we can use. And uh, there's not much to see, but what we can see is that we have a volts one and volts two reading of 13.8 and 13.7. Uh, and if we go to our electrical page, we can see uh, that that matches. Um, so that's actually pretty handy. And this will also download the EIS logs uh, live, or it'll download historical logs too. So you can view uh, engine logs and stuff. And if something happens, or if you want to watch your EGTs or something while you're flying, um, you can do that. Uh, we'll go over to the devices page over here just to kind of see what we've got going on. Uh, so we've got GPS coming from the G3X Touch. We've got AHARS coming from our avionics. You can see that's all valid. ADSB, we have no ground stations, but we're tracking the one target, which was that United aircraft. Uh, there's our firmware for everything. Um, flight plan transfer, you can see is green. And then of course, if you have like a GDL 51 or 51R, which we do put in some of our systems, that would be an additional Bluetooth connection, but that would let us also do Sirius XM audio control through here, uh, as well as Sirius XM weather. Uh, all this will also work on ForeFlight. Uh, the only thing that ForeFlight can't do that Garmin Pilot can do as far as Connect goes is uh, set the uh, radio stations and the volume of the GDL 50 series, 51 series. Um, but more than likely, we've got that set up on the G3X anyways. Um, it would be a page down here, so it's not a big deal. So one thing that's pretty handy with the Bluetooth music portion is that uh, you can actually have, so I run ForeFlight um, personally, I don't use Garmin Pilot much, but with ForeFlight, uh, for any of you who use it, you probably are well aware of the features it has where it will give you like runway alerts, it will tell you what your AWOS frequency is as you're coming up to the airport, things like that. Uh, so to use that portion, uh, what we can do is if you're in the normal distribution mode here, you just set your source to Bluetooth and then you turn on music. Uh, what I like to do though is I like to set my distribution to advanced. And what this lets me do is if um, I want to listen to the iPad to Bluetooth, but my passengers want to plug into the three and a half millimeter port and they want to listen to something else, they can do that. So we've got source music, so maybe co-pilot passengers want to listen to three and a half millimeter. Maybe the co-pilot wants to be brought up with me on Bluetooth. Uh, if we had XM, that would be an option in here as well. So uh, in that case, you'd have three different sources to listen to, and then you can set the volume individually. So when I'm flying as the pilot, uh, pretty much exclusively I'll be on Bluetooth. Uh, and I have my volume quite low so that the, uh, it doesn't overpower the radio or anything like that. Um, and then the uh, passengers, you know, they'll do whatever they want. Um, of course, phone calls, it's pretty handy on here too. So if you turn on telephone audio, whenever you get a phone call, um, you, it can pipe in through the audio panel and it respects the isolation. So what that means is if I isolate myself, I will be the only one that's able to hear that telephone call. Uh, this is really handy if you're on the ground somewhere and you need to pick up a clearance before you go fly an IFR uh, or if you need to cancel your clearance after you land. That's really handy. Uh, so I, I really like that feature on there. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as the audio panel portion goes. There's not a whole lot to do, but it is a pretty nice little thing. Makes those cross countries a little less monotonous. All right, so I hope you enjoyed our quick demonstration of the Bluetooth features of the G3X Touch system. Uh, we hope this has answered some questions. We've noticed a few of them come through on uh, Facebook and YouTube, so we hope that this helps you guys out. Uh, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave them as a comment or uh, get a hold of us through our normal channels. Uh, we'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.